Good morning, everybody. Thank you for um, jumping on today's call. And um, we wanted to provide BOMA with an overview of Carlisle Syntec Systems, um, a complete company overview, just so you can kind of understand who Carlisle is and where we fall into the, uh, the corporate structure and then give a detailed overview of basically the challenges that have been uh, presented to us in, in the face of COVID-19 and how we're trying to combat that as a company. Uh, and we will have a couple of other presenters on the call uh, to talk about Carlisle strategic accounts and as well as our local uh, independent sales representative, Geis Associates, and he will provide an overview on his firm as well as um, services and um, uh, products, et cetera, that they, uh, they offer in the local marketplace. So um, my name is Chad Shruppel. I work directly for Carlisle Syntec Systems. Uh, I am a technical sales specialist. And the, the way I like to describe my role is basically an extension of the local rep team that I, that, um, I support. And what I mean by that is um, we provide a lot of rooftop services uh, of which Eric will um, expand on in greater detail, I'll do a lot of work with the architectural and consultant com community on specification work, detail, um, questions, things like this, work with our roofers as it relates to product training, and then obviously making sure that we are uh, in lockstep with our local distribution as well as it relates to um, our objectives and sales goals and things like this. So um, I've been with Carlisle for over 10 years, uh, have held a variety of different roles, but um, that's kind of a little bit of background on myself. Um, what I'd like to do um, real quick is just have Greg Petschke with Carlisle Strategic Accounts introduce himself as well as Eric Geis with Geis Associates, and then flip it back to me, and then we'll, we'll get into the meat of the, of the presentation. So, Greg, do you mind? Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Greg Petschke. I'm the manager of the strategic accounts team uh, here at Carlisle. So uh, we'll, I'll tell you in a little bit a little bit more about my team and what we do. Uh, just uh, to hit briefly, you know, my team's focus is connecting at the corporate level with customers, uh, building owners that go across multiple states, and then... Uh, pulling together uh, local contacts and local resources to make roofing easier. So, uh, Eric? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Eric Geis. I'm the local independent rep uh, for Carlisle Syntec um, out of Pittsburgh and uh, cover Western PA out to uh, State College and uh, West, uh, West Virginia. Uh, we'll get to a slide a little bit about, you know, the, uh, the rep firm in a little bit and, and, uh, who the uh, other employees are, but um, um, I appreciate the opportunity to, to have us speak today. And I think the common theme, uh, once we get into this, is going to be about uh, innovation and uh, labor savings in these uh, in these hard times. Um, you know, amid you know COVID nineteen and how it's uh, impacted our business and everybody's business. So, Chad, I'll turn it back to you, and uh, you can get started. Thanks, real quick, Eric. Before you mute yourself, just uh, you can see the slides, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. So with that, we're going to jump right in and um, I'll kind of give you a, a broad overview as it relates to what we're going to cover. Um, I'll first give an introduction on Carlisle um, companies and then where Carlisle Syntec Systems falls into that um, org, org structure. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, what 2019 looked like as it relates to the commercial roofing industry, um, as well as take a look at what what was thought to be some early projections on 2020, but then how um, COVID-19 impacted those, those forecasts and projections. Um, Greg will then give a, uh, an overview on Carlisle Strategic Accounts and how BOMA can leverage his group. And then Eric will do a, an overview on his, uh, his rep firm as it relates to, again, some of the services that they can offer BOMA, um, as well as um, we'll talk about some product innovations that we really uh, pride ourselves on as it relates to helping the construction industry, and now more than ever, um, as it relates to the challenges that we face as it relates to this pandemic and how Carlisle can be of service and, and help navigate these trying times in a, in a more uh, strategic and systematic way. So with that, we'll go ahead and jump in. So um, like I mentioned, I work for Carlisle Syntec Systems, and that is a division under Carlisle Construction Materials. Carlisle Construction Materials is then a division 
under the Carlisle corporate umbrella. Um, Carlisle Companies is publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange, our ticker is CSL. And in 2019, we did 4.8 billion. Um, as so we break that 4.8 billion down into the four divisions that you see on the screen. And I'll start on the far left. Carlisle Fluid Technologies is a basically a paint delivery um, systems equipment manufacturer. Um, and then Carlisle Brake and Friction, uh, think big agricultural equipment, the big earth moving equipment that you see on uh, the highways and uh, rehabbing our infrastructure. So they do all of the, the break, um, breaking components and such for that big equipment. And then you have Carlisle Inter Interconnect Technologies. I think someone uh, I heard once say that's the sexy part of our business. Um, so think about the airline industry, think about all the wiring harnesses, uh, the in-flight entertainment, um, your Wi-Fi connections, all of those components uh, are manufactured by someone like Carlisle Interconnect Technologies. And then Carlisle Construction Materials, as you can see, of the 4.8 um, Carlisle made, Carlisle Construction Materials made up about 3.2 um, billion of the, of the 4.8. Um, again, another analogy I, I once heard, if, if Carlisle Construction Materials um, catches the cold, the corporation catches the flu. So it's really important for Carlisle Construction Materials to perform year in and year out as it relates to um, our stockholders' interest in our company and uh, long-term performance. So that's a little bit about Carlisle companies and where Carlisle Syntex Systems, again, whom I'm employed with, falls into that picture. So we'll break that down a little bit further. So oftentimes, a lot of people think of Carlisle Syntex Systems as a small um, roofing manufacturer in, um, based out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And so one thing holds true is, is that we, we are headquartered out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. But as you can see, um, we are a much larger company than many folks um, originally um, think of us as. And so I think the last time I counted on this map, there's about 40 different manufacturing facilities throughout the country that are listed here. And um, they are color coded. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the products that we do manufacture. But basically, we have a couple of EPDM product lines or manufacturing lines, uh, one in Carlisle, excuse me, one in Smithfield, excuse me, one in Carlisle. Uh, and one in Greenville, Illinois. And then we make the TPO roofing me membrane, again in Carlisle, Senatobia, and Tooele. And we, uh, PVC is another roofing membrane that we manufacture that's out of Greenville, Illinois. And then polyiso is all the green dots scattered across the country. We, uh, we also manufacture EPS, uh, expanded polystyrene. It's just another um, insulation option that you have at your disposal. Think styrofoam, that's, that's the best way that I can try to describe that for you and give you a visual, um, but in board form. And then we um, recently acquired a lot of metal businesses. And so we recognize the metal business is somewhere where we can expand uh, and build on that uh, 3.8 million. Uh, and metal was a big part of that growth goal. Bowman Coatings is another company that we acquired through acquisition, HVAC products, and then Carlisle Coatings and waterproofing. So think, uh, below grade waterproofing, continuous um, wall waterproofing, uh, everything not on the roof. So um, Carlisle Construction Materials, the way I like to describe this is we are a building envelopes manufacturer. And so uh, a lot of people, we've made our name on the rooftop, but we are a building envelope um, products manufacturer. So again, continuous wall waterproofing, below grade blindside waterproofing, continuous wall insulation. Uh, and then the roof. So think six sides of the building, Carlisle Construction Materials can service that particular that building. And so if you take a look at um, Carlisle Syntex Systems, again, a brand under the Carlisle Construction Materials umbrella, um, this particular screen gives you a snapshot of, of Carlisle versus all of our major manufacturers. And really what we try to illustrate here or, or um, convey is we are basic and manufacturing of all of these major components that go on the roof. So EPDM, think black rubber, TPO is a, is a form of thermoplastic. It dominates the market. Um, PVC is another version of a thermoplastic, very specific use cases for PVC, but one of the fastest growing membrane segments in the industry. Polyiso, again, the insulation underneath the membrane. This gives you all your, your insulating value, your R value for, the, for energy savings and um, energy efficiency. 
Adhesives is one method of membrane attachment, but we manufacture all of our adhesives, tapes for seaming, uh, SPF coatings and EPS. So long story short, uh, we manufacture all of these components. All of our other competitors can't say the same. So we are far more vertically integrated than any other manufacturer that we compete with. And this just gives you, gives you another, I guess, visual of the number of manufacturing facilities and lines that we have. Uh, think back to the map that I showed you previously. This is just another way to illustrate that. But if you look at um, Syntec and compare that against our major uh, competitors, we have far more um, uh, capacity and capital invested into our manufacturing lines than our, our major competitors in the marketplace. Um, so one of the, we, we have basically these five pillars that we operate on day in and day out. And we think that these are what delivers the, the Carlisle experience and a differentiating factor for Car Carlisle versus all others in the marketplace. And so, again, we think this is our competitive advantage. And again, we, we coined the phrase, the Carlisle experience. We want to deliver on every one of these each and every day. And if we do that, we think that we have a competitive advantage in the marketplace. And so the first two bullet points here, training and innovation, I'll talk about these a little bit more in depth throughout the slot or throughout this uh, presentation. But training is a really big component in our industry. So, so important that we uh, constructed a $15 million building on campus dedicated 100% to continuous education and training for the roofing industry. Innovation, again, this is something that has set Carlisle apart from the very early years. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in depth as well. But just like we've invested capital into a new brand, uh, brand new training and education center, we've done the same for a research and innovation center as well. Um, innovation is uh, something that's gonna continue to push us forward. And we'll talk about a lot of the innovative products that we have that can help us navigate these challenging times, again, in the face of COVID-19. Uh, and I'll talk about a little bit what those challenges are and how we can leverage the innovation piece that we, um, we pride ourselves on. Operational excellence, as you saw on that previous slide, we have a ton of manufacturing facilities and manufacturing lines. Um, we, we think we are the best in the business as it relates to first pass yields. But essentially, that means if you take a raw good and you produce a finished good, how much waste is left over and we think that um, we do that really really well um, you, you pair that with uh, continuous improvement both in the manufacturing facility and in our offices uh, we are a culture of continuous improvement we are always looking for ways to improve and again help distinguish or set us apart from our competition and in our management stability and consistency if you're familiar with some of our major competitors they they t tend to turn over upper management quite often, and, uh, and that tends to have some market uh, disruption. And um, Carlisle is not, that is not the case for Carlisle. Our senior management staff has, um, I think the last time I looked at it, several have over 35 years of experience in commercial roofing, um, and some are not very far behind. So think about 20, 25 years. So we have management stability and consistency, and that goes a long way with uh, leveraging or um, differentiating ourselves in the marketplace. So I want to take a quick look at 2019 so you can kind of see uh, the health of the market as we entered into 2020. And then I'll also show you a snapshot of what the early projections were in late Q4 of 2019 for 2020 and now how they are drastically different um, because of the, the pandemic that we are currently faced with. So 2019 in review and so spry is a is basically an industry in which all single ply manufacturers report into and so um it's based on shipped square footage of membrane and essentially in aggregate gives you the health of the market once everybody reports in and so as you can see here we've been on a a, a really solid run for the last decade in terms of growth um, and that was suspected to continue into 2020 in the in the tune of uh, low single digits um, so the construction industry uh, mainly and specifically here as illustrated on the screen the roofing industry has been very very good to everybody that has been in the marketplace and so just a lot of really good um or a lot of momentum year over year uh, and again, that trend was suspected to continue into 2020. So just a really healthy construction market, uh, mainly single ply roofing. 
So if you look at 2020 outlook, uh, this is a, there's a lot on this screen, so I'll try to uh, simplify it as best as I can. The ABI is an index in which um, basically, um, bear with me, I apologize here. This is a barometer of future work versus kind of real time or current and state. And so it takes a look at billings, inquiries, and a design contract. So think about the design community mainly. Um, and that's what this basically illustrates. Anything above 50 is uh, basically meaning there's expansion or growth in the marketplace. And so this was suspected to continue. Uh, this expansion was suspected to continue into 2020. Um, but um, we did think that there was going to be a little bit of a slowdown, um, but not until the latter half of 2020. And again, that actually early part of 2020, we, we felt like that was actually going to be even pushed into 2021. So if you look here, each one of these billings, inquiries, design contracts were all above 50. Just to give you some context in terms of what that looks like as it relates to the impact of COVID-19, in March, um, we saw a significant decline. The index was about 33.3%. And then in April, even um, more declines of about, you know, to an aggregate 29 and a half. So you're looking at 29 and a half and 33 in the first 60 days of the pandemic here domestically. So um, really, really impacted the construction industry, mainly the architectural community in, in terms of what is basically they're working on that then will hit the street for um, bid and ultimately installation uh, in, in the months to come. And so, um, Big, big time impact as it relates to COVID on the architectural side. Um, bear with me here. So another index or barometer that we take a look at is a contractor backlog. This basically says how much work a contractor has in the hopper. And this particular um, metric would, was suggesting that it was about eight and a half months of, of, of work that they had under contract and um, they had to work through. So essentially job stability for those roofers for eight and a half months, that's good. Uh, and that's assuming they didn't get anything else um, in or new work. Um, to put that into context, that eight and a half months dropped to seven or slightly below seven in the months of, of April and March. So just like the architectural community has been impacted, so too has the contractors um, because obviously it's a downstream effect. And so everybody's feeling the squeeze of, of, of COVID-19. And then one final view is just a Dodge. Dodge is essentially an analytics platform and a tool that's used in the construction industry. Uh, they were suggesting that the uh, construction industry, mainly the, uh, the building types on the screen that you see here was was to decline and so warehouses which is a big part so i think distribution centers was to decline about nine percent educational buildings was the only bright spot we were expecting to see that uh, have some increases of about four percent and then office buildings and retail stores were going to show some decline as well um, and that makes up a significant part of the market and so as you saw on that, that screen that uh, illustrated what the market health looked like or the the market strength as it relates to commercial roofing we were expecting um, flat to, to moderate uh, declines in 2020. And so nat naturally, then you, uh, you add COVID on top of that, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty bleak story to tell. Um, one thing though to mention, uh, we did a pretty comprehensive deep dive internally to understand, okay, where should we be adjusting or pivoting our focus, knowing that um, the ABI index is down, um, we think that the, obviously the airline industry was hit really hard. Retail was hit really hard. Uh, so who, who do we think is potentially going to be thriving or is going to have, I don't like the word thriving, but who, who, what businesses or industries are actually going to be okay during the pandemic? And what we found that is that food, the food industry, mainly like cold storage buildings, food processing plants, um grocery stores things like that they, those businesses were actually doing fairly well during the um the pandemic and still continue to do well um obviously hospitals um, um and facilities such as that in the, in the medical um, world assisted living facilities um, they too were operational and uh it's mainly obviously hospitals were um 
unfortunately at capacity and so um, roofing is a, an essential task or trade there so that is another area that we saw some some decent um, momentum and, uh, and and work incoming again distribution centers data centers so just a couple of idea or, or peek behind the curtain in terms of what we are seeing as as still opportunities in the marketplace for commercial roofing and construction so not everything is is doom and gloom and there are some uh, areas of our business that are actually doing fairly well. Um, and so with that, I'm going to transition over to Greg and he, he'll give a little bit of an overview on Carlos strategic accounts and how BOMA can leverage his group. So Greg. Great. Thanks, Chad. So as I said earlier, uh, strategic accounts or other people call it national accounts is a group of people focused on uh, building owners who typically have properties across multiple states certainly strong regional presence and even a broad national presence. So this includes everything from direct retail uh, people such as Walmart or Home Depot to uh, major warehouse uh, operators, you know, builders and operators, and a variety of other folks. So uh, our job is to uh, connect with those folks, provide uh, a connection, a single point of contact that gets them to all of the resources that Carlisle has available to them and then to leverage all of that down to the local level so that when we need uh, to know who the right roofers are for a project in Pittsburgh, let's say, uh, we can get to the local team and provide that information. So that's, that's in a nutshell who we are and what we do. So Chad touched on this earlier, the Carlisle experience. As a company, we are extremely focused on making working with Carlisle as simple as possible. Uh, we're not perfect. Uh, and one of the great points of this whole process is to not uh, not believe our own uh, superlatives, if you will. Uh, our, our goal is to truly uh, be out with our customers, provide a high level of services and support, continually look to do better, and then ultimately, through your eyes, understand are we achieving that and where can we improve, uh, improve and do even better. Uh, the strategic accounts team focuses in three key areas. So uh, building owners, consultants, and national roofing contractors. So building owners, I've talked about a little bit already. That's you folks, uh, the people who are out owning and operating the buildings uh, across the country. Uh, consultants from our perspective is a growing uh, area of influence. So the consultant world has a you know, just an increasing level of uh, involvement in the roofing world. And so we see them as key players and people that we look to partner with and work with closely. And then the National Roofing Contractors is a group of roofers uh, that we work with who have a, either a strong, very strong uh, regional preference or a national presence. So you can probably, you're probably aware of some of these names, but they are uh, key roofers that we rely on and work with very closely. So just in terms of a uh, bit of an overview, I've talked a little bit about some of this. So we're, we're focused nationally on building owner relationships uh, we provide a gateway through a single point of contact to bring all of the resources that Carlisle has to bear uh, on your jobs. So whether you've got a just simply a, a routine roof replacement, you've got an issue, a problem with a roof, whatever it might be, Carlisle has a variety of resources available that can be brought to bear on those projects to make that job go easier and reduce your pain points. Chad, you want to go ahead and hit? So in terms of some of, go ahead and punch all those up if you want, Chad. One more. So uh, what are some of the things that we do? We bring a lot of information and education to the process, right? So we're going to help educate our building owner customers on exactly what systems do we have, uh, what systems might be best for the, the, the job or the roof that they're looking to replace, and uh, just help them with that side of things. We look to collaborate. So as I've already said, bring together multiple resources uh, within Carlisle, outside of Carlisle, and the consultant community community and our local reps uh, to uh, really uh, impact your jobs. We provide a lot of support. So I have a technical person on my team who gets out in the field regularly to, to take a look at a roof and hey, I've got this problem area or I've got this just a different situation. How would you suggest we handle it? We provide a lot of that work. Uh, we have resources available, as I said, so whether that's on the, the design review side of things, warranty services, uh, you know, leak, uh, leak work, that sort of thing. We can provide all of uh, those resources. And we do it all on a nationwide basis. So we're truly reach, reaching across all 50 states and actually outside of the United States as well. 
So just to kind of pinpoint of this a little bit, uh, this is, I guess, how we see ourselves in strategic accounts, sort of the, the hub of the, the wheel, if you will. Um, so literally for our strategic accounts, for the people that we deal with uh, corporately, uh, we provide them with a single point of contact. So I have a portfolio of accounts that I deal with. Those accounts call me for whatever their issue, problem, or need might be. And then I connect them out to all of these different services that Carlisle has uh, available. So again, looking to take all the pain or as much of the pain as we can out of the roofing world and the roofing process and make it effective uh, and as easy as we can possibly make it. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Eric Geis. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Um, up until this point, I mean, Chad's given a great uh, background on the company of, uh, you know, Carlisle Syntec and a uh, little history and construction previous year, uh, what the outlook is. Um, and Greg, thanks for uh, the information on, a, on your strategic account uh, team and what you can help. But at this point, we're going to talk about what I think the main focus of this presentation is going to be is, is how COVID-19 has affected businesses. Um, and not not just general businesses, but specifically construction and, and the roofing, commercial roofing um, uh, businesses out there. Um, and we're going to get into ways uh, that we feel that we can, uh, you know, be of assistance. And really, that's through innovation of products and, and systems. So we'll be getting into that in the slides to come. Do you want to advance? Okay, so <clears throat> COVID-19 commercial roofing challenges, uh, economy. We understand what's happened. Uh, uh, every state's a little different. Uh, Western Pennsylvania, you know, and Pennsylvania in general has been uh, impacted pretty hard. Um, so the economy's uh, been affected. Uh, so uh, that may mean, you know, loss, loss of time um, on, you know, in, in specific to uh, construction projects, uh, building owners, uh, um, uh, you know, architects, uh, uh, developers, they might be a little more strapped for, for cash and spending on what they want to spend on projects moving forward. Uh, so economy has definitely uh, been impacted by COVID-19. We all know that. Uh, safety protocol has definitely uh, presented a challenge for, let's just talk specifically on construction and commercial roofing. Um, you know, we all heard that there's, you know, they got a, there's a lot of protocol in place. You got to you got to wear um, masks. They got in some projects. Got to have six foot uh, um, distancing on projects or cleaning stations. Uh, even pandemic uh, uh, safety officers uh, have been in place. What that does is that that impacts uh, production and the amount of uh, amount of uh, um, work you can get done in a day. So that is impacting. It is a challenge. Um, labor labor shortages uh, you know companies not many companies worked through the COVID-19 the last 10 to 12 weeks so a lot had to lay off workers uh, getting them back has been a challenge uh, for some companies um, some um, some employees I think have have um, are still little little afraid to come back to work because of uh, COVID-19 uh, others have chose to stay on unemployment because it's more beneficial than uh, going back to work. Um, so that has been uh, the labor uh, has been an issue. I think um, I think labor is coming back now, but definitely in the first couple of weeks that was that was an issue. Uh, loss of work days. So um, completion date uh, expectations. So with contractors missing 10 to 12 uh, weeks of work. Um, you know, although some did file for waivers, uh, most uh, did not. So it's how do we get this done? We have most have you know pretty good amount of backlog. So how do we get this done in a shortened amount of uh, uh, of days to work with? You know, losing two to three months. Um, so uh, that's that equates really again to uh, um, production. Weather dependent on weather in these in these uh, the rest of the year. You hope that in November and December will be dry um, uh, to get uh, to get uh, projects done and get your uh, normal workload done in a year. Uh, so these are all challenges that uh, that contractors have, commercial roofing contractors have, and again, the way that uh, we think that we can help 
with Carlisle Syntec and here locally is through labor saving products and systems. Um, helping on selection of a system and products that can save on labor uh, that can help you get it done quicker. Uh, looking at types of installations, uh, maybe in, you know, in lieu of a uh, complete tear off on a commercial roofing project, maybe that uh, particular roof uh, the particular roof would be a candidate for a recover. So these are ways that we can help. Um, and again, innovation is the way to offset uh, these, these COVID-19 challenges. Wanna advance? Okay, so locally, um, here's a little bit you know, uh, about Geist Associates. Uh, as you can see, uh, we, got, uh, we got four individuals here that have a lot of experience in commercial roofing. Different backgrounds. Uh, myself, I've, I've been on the, uh, the rep side of uh, the business uh, for 25, a uh, little over 25 years now. Uh, Joe Candioto uh, has experience on a distribution side uh, with uh, working direct for a manufacturer, Carlisle Syntec, uh, and now on the rep side, Jim Bennington uh, started in the commercial roofing business on the contracting end, spent many years in distribution, and now is on the rep side with us as well. And as Chad indicated before, he's got 10 years with Carlisle Syntec, and uh, he is an extension of our rep firm, as he mentioned. And uh, he's had a lot of duties with, with Carlisle uh, in the 10 years uh, from a field tech. Uh, so he's a technical side and the sales side, uh, as well as a pricing analyst. So uh, he's a great resource uh, having him as a kind of liaison with, uh, with Carlisle Syntec. Territories covered, uh, Western PA, as I mentioned, in West Virginia. And if there's any projects that are outside of our area, uh, we can coordinate you know, through, uh, Ray can help us on some things on the uh, strategic account, but uh, we can, I can talk with the, uh, the rep network uh, to get your support that way in advance. As far as services that we can do as a rep firm, um, we can, we can uh, do roof walks and, and provide recommendations. We can core, do core cuts of the existing roof system to see what you have and see what your options are. Pull out tests into the deck, uh, into the, you know, whether it's steel or concrete or um, uh, lightweight, um, gypsum, whatever it is, and we can check out the pull out values, we can do that. Um, we, can, we can help you with, if you're looking for uh, uh, Carlisle applicators to bid work, we can assist you with that as well. Uh, we also work with architects and engineers uh, roof consultants on scope of work options, uh, design assistance, and details. So we do that every day. Um, we, we are uh, available for, for pre-bid and pre-con um, uh, visits and assistance if you're bidding out a project, uh, as well as help you to uh, co uh, coordinate uh, interim inspections. You can advance. So here's, here's contact information. I think Chad's gonna put this back up on the last slide, uh, just so you know how to reach out to us if we can be of any help uh, moving forward. Innovation, I'm gonna turn it over to Chad. We're gonna get, get into some specific products and then some systems where we feel that uh, uh, it can help uh, the roofing contractor um, for installation, as well as cut down the installation cost for the building owner, architect, um, uh, property manager. So go ahead, Chad. All right, thanks, Eric. Um, uh, appreciate that. And yeah, I will put up this, the contact slide here at the end. Um, I believe it will also be embedded into the, the, the comment section on the channel. So you'll know how to reach out to us should you have questions on this presentation or simply need some assistance on some projects that you have in the hopper or upcoming. So uh, as Eric mentioned, uh, there's a couple of things that we can really leverage uh, in these trying times uh, that we're faced with, and innovation is certainly one of them. Innovation has always been a staple of Carlisle and Tech Systems, um, but even more so now. Um, and even before COVID even surfaced, we recognized that um, that was a, a, a competitive advantage for us and a, and a differentiator. And we were um, in, in desperate need of, of some additional space on campus to, to make sure that we elevate our innovation uh, because again, it's, it's something that's it's, uh, sets us apart. So 
Uh, as I mentioned, we deployed a, 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 a tremendous amount of capital to build this brand new state-of-the-art facility. It's very difficult to recruit some folks to central Pennsylvania um, to be um, chemists and um, for, for the commercial roofing industry without a state-of-the-art facility. And so that's what this building is, um, and it's really impressive. So um, we, we'd love, if there's of interest, if there's interest by anybody on the call, uh, to come to Carlisle to not only visit our, our manufacturing facility, but if, if you have an interest in going through our research and innovation center, we'd be happy to, to, to host you there. Um, give me one second here. And then uh, kind of almost in lockstep, uh, another thing that we feel like we can leverage to help us get through this uh, challenging time and obviously and then prepare us for the future is continually uh, training the, the contractor base. One of the things that we heard uh, through various voice of the customer in initiatives is that um, it's very difficult to hire and then ultimately retain labor. Um, commercial roofing obviously requires hands on hands and feet on the roof to, to put this material down, uh, and it's it's not the most glamorous work. So. Uh, what the contractors that we interviewed suggested that hey, if you can help us train our folks, um, we think we can we can retain them longer. And so, like I said, we built this brand new state of the art training and education center, so um, we can host uh, customers and do hands on training. Um, but it's far more than that, right? So we we uh, do a lot of meetings in this particular building, we um, both internal and external. Um, and um, I'm trying to think about what I'm missing here, but long and short of it, this is not a, a car, while this is on the Carlisle Syntec campus, Carlisle Construction Materials campus, we view this building as an industry building. And so um, just like I offered up um, the Research and Innovation Center, if you want to tour that, this building too can be yours and uh, what we can basically turn it over and brand it BOMA, uh, should you have an interest in hosting a meeting in this facility. Um, We've had several of our national distributors hold meetings here. Uh, some of our larger contractors have, ha have had really sizable meetings in here in addition to the hands-on training. And so uh, this, is, this is an industry building. Uh, we built it uh, with the interest of having it at 100% capacity every single day. Now, obviously, um, there are a little bit of visitor restrictions on our campus right now, as I'm sure there is in, in your world. Uh, but once all of those are lifted, we'd love to host you. Um, but training is a big piece um, as it relates to the labor shortage, right? And so if you don't have, if you can't retain people or you can't recruit people, or excuse me, if you can't recruit people because there's a shortage, you need to be able to retain the folks that you have. And so training is a big part of, of navigating the, the COVID-19 challenges. You, again, like I mentioned, you then parlay that with innovation. You can do more with less is the way that we like to describe that. And so on the screen right now is a bunch of innovative products that we've come out with over the last 18, 24 months that are really helping guys get on the roof, get, get on the roof and get off the roof quicker um, because they can speed of application, um, user friendliness of products and things like that. And so all of these products are game changing in the commercial roofing industry and have um, again, really set us apart from our competition. So, I think I'm gonna talk about almost all of these um, in the next couple of slides, but again, these are just a, a few of the innovative products that we've released over the last, uh, again, 18, 24 months. So rapid lock, um, and I'll talk about this a little, I'll, I'll talk about this in pretty broad terms, but um, so if you're familiar with commercial roofing, mainly single ply roofing, there is, two main methods of membrane attachment and that's mechanical attachment with plates and fasteners and or adhesives and so each of those systems come with their own set of unique challenges or restrictions um, so if i take the the adhesive component for example um, there's a lot of smell that comes with uh, adhesives as as well as installation uh, temperature restrictions and so one way to combat that is with this system is called, that's called rapid lock. And, that, and then the other system is mechanical attachment. And the only reason, so the, one of the, the downsides of mechanical attachment is that you have to penetrate the roof deck. And so um, perhaps maybe that's not an option because uh, it's a, uh, an OR room at a hospital. 
um, or there's conduits on the underside of the roof deck that can't be penetrated. So you need to have a non-penetrating roof assembly. And so Rapid Lock is a system that basically takes uh, a hook and loop concept. So think Velcro, where you have your insulation board has the hook and then the loop is the, is the fleece on the underside of the membrane. You made, it, made them together like you would a uh, anything Velcro. And there's your, your method of, of membrane attachment. And so this is truly an award-winning uh, innovative product, um, as you can see on the, on the screen now. And so this picture here just is trying to illustrate, and I apologize, it's a little pixelated. Um, it didn't look like that until I expanded this in, in PowerPoint view or, or um, presentation view, but in any event. Um, the, 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 white, the right side there where you see all of those fasteners, um, that is the insulation and on the on the top side of that um, insulation board is the is the rough side of the velcro and then the, the guys on the left are peeling or are removing this release liner to expose the fleece to so think the fuzzy side of the velcro and then what they'll end up ultimately end up doing is make the two together and again there's your membrane attachment and so this is pretty revolutionary in the commercial roofing industry it uh to be very frank with you, it blew a lot of people's minds when we introduced it to the marketplace and, and people just couldn't believe that they were uh, seeing a Velcro roof assembly on a, on a commercial roofing application. Um, and so where can this be leveraged? So think about occupied buildings. So hospitals um, is, is a really easy one that comes to mind. But any building that has occupants on the inside where you want to limit um, noise as well as uh, odors, this is an option for you to consider. Think about cold weather applications. So Pittsburgh gets, is, gets awfully cold in the winter time. And again, your, the number of uh, applications that you can consider is uh, diminished because of, of, again, installation temperature restrictions on some products. And so this particular system has no temperature restrictions. So you can install this at any temperature and it's gonna uh, go down with ease. And so, this thing, this this innovation speaks to a lot of different things, and one is it's, it's speed of application, uh, and it's ease of use, and so that speaks to labor shortages and doing more with less. Another um, innovative product that's out in the marketplace that's 100% geared towards ease of use as well as um, speed of application is what's called self-adhering membrane, and so. Um, think about that make the, the attachment method of using uh, adhesives. This is a direct replacement for that, and it 100% is geared towards doing more with less uh, in a quicker uh, quicker time frame. And so, uh, this is just a pretty slick little infographic that shows you what a tri uh, time trial study that was conducted and how it actually uh, how one performed versus the other. To the top being the traditional. Uh, fully adhered membrane where you actually you have to roll out your sheet, position it. You have to apply your bonding adhesive to your substrate in your membrane. Uh, then you mate the, the two together. You roll in the sheet, um, and then you do that same step on the other half of the sheet, and then you and then you roll it in it as well. And that basically added up to 42 minutes to set one sheet, and I believe it was a 10 by 100. Um, so and then so you take that. And then you think about the self-adhering technology. And basically what this is, is we apply the adhesive in the factory and we apply a, a release liner so it doesn't, you know, if they, when you roll it up, it doesn't stick to itself. And so this completely, this reduces or this eliminates the, the need for applying the bonding adhesive on the rooftop. And so that's really where the, the labor is on this particular assembly. And not only a labor component, but there's a thing called flash off time. So meaning when you apply that, that bonding adhesive, it's in a liquid state and you need to, you want it to get to a very tacky state and that's called flash off time, but that takes time. Um, and the colder the, the climate, the more, the longer it takes for that to flash off. And so you got, you have a lot of kind of wait time if you will on the roof. This system takes that completely away or reduces that variable to zero. And so, um, with this technology, you roll out your sheet, you position it, you remove the release liner, you made it to the substrate, you roll it in, and you're done. It takes 12 minutes to do that same 10 by 100 sheet. And so this is another thing. Again, innovative product speaks to labor savings, uh, labor shortages, which, again, is a, is a direct result of COVID-19. So something that can be leveraged. This is just a, a, a visual of what the system looks like. 
they're removing that release liner. If, if you look in the far left-hand corner, that's the adhesive on the back side of that membrane. It's already applied. Again, uh, you compare that to having to do that in the field, it's a significant time saver. Um, another unique product, an innovative product that we have out in the marketplace is, uh, it's called an Optimar. And so basically what this system is, um, it gives you the R value that may, that's required on the rooftop, but it gives you that R value in a very um, thin layer of insulation. And so um, if you take a look at the one on the left, the traditional poly ISO insulation package, uh, you have two layers of 3.3 inch ISO to get an R38. And um, that's a lot of height. Sometimes you don't have the building height. And I'll talk about where these situations occur on a rooftop. Uh, you can't accommodate um, over six inches of insulation. So what's the alternative? Well, we have this product called Optimar. And you basically can have uh, an R38 with an overall thickness of 2.6 inches. And so Optimar, I think I have a picture of it. Uh, and any, I think I do, but any, if you look at this picture on the right, the top board's a half inch HD board or a cover board, high density cover board. The bottom is the same product. Then sandwiched in the middle there is this Optimar panel. And it's called the, it's basically a vacuum insulated panel. Um, it can't be punctured. So you got to sandwich it uh, between uh, two cover boards. And I'll talk about that assembly, but basically this is the, the assembly. And so, um, you take your roof deck, in this case, the steel deck. So look at number one there on the left. Uh, you then take your half inch cover board. Uh, you can either mechanically attach that to that substrate and or put it in uh, adhesive. And then you take your Optimar, your 1.6 inch Optimar sandwiched vacuum insulated panel. It set that in adhesive. Again, it can't be punctured because it will lose all of its R value when you do that. So you got to protect it with that bottom cover board. And then again with the top cover board, and then of course you do your, your bonding adhesive and your membrane in this particular instance. So again, it can't be punctured, so you can't use plates and fasteners to mechanically attach that to the, to the roof deck. So it's gotta be sandwiched between two cover boards and you have to use adhesive for that um, field assembly. And so where would this be leveraged? So think about uh, historical buildings, uh, landmark buildings where uh, you simply can't modify the building. So you can't, um, you can't raise windowsills, door heights, uh, penthouse, well, through wall scuppers, parapet walls, things like that. So there might be a landmark restriction where you can't modify the building, uh, or if you can modify the building, it's gonna take a ton of time to get that uh, approval process through. Um, or if you actually ultimately get that approval, it's really, really expensive to do uh, building modifications. And so, um, an alternative to that is to use this thinner insulation package that gives you your R value without having to go through the expense of, of the building modification. I, full caveat or full disclosure, this, this Optimar system is very, very expensive, but it pales in comparison to the, the, the cost that it would take to make those building modifications to accommodate over six inches of ISO. So um, it is expensive. It's not something that you'll use on every on every job, but it, it's a we call we like to call this a problem solver. And this gives you a unique option for a situation that you could encounter on a rooftop. Another very innovative product that is being um, heavily leveraged is this product called Appeal. And so, um, building owners such as um, Boma um, want if they if they want a white roof, um, they want a white roof. And what I mean by that is this. White roofs during installation can get incredibly dirty and they are very, very difficult to clean once they are dirty, especially if you're doing a re-roof and you're tearing off the old roof. Uh, I don't, I've seen it done a million different ways in terms of uh, rooftop staging. You can never do it where you can keep the roof clean throughout the installation process. And so um, there's a unique product out here called Appeal where you basically keep this film on the roof during the installation. And then once the entire installation is done, you come up and you, you, you peel back this film and you reveal a, a, a beautiful white roof. Um, Greg and his team work with a, uh, a national consultant. I was just on a roof a couple of weeks ago or a month ago and uh, in their specification, they called for a white roof. And so if it wasn't white, they're gonna require them to power or pressure wash it. So pressure washing is extremely, 
uh, it can be a very labor intensive process and it can also be costly. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't achieve what you're after and that is cleaning the roof. And so um, they had a mandate in their specification said you need a white roof. And every contractor that was at that pre-bid meeting raised their hand and said, we, we're gonna go with appeal. And he said, perfect. And so um, it is, uh, again, so think about COVID and the challenges that we're faced with. Uh, Pressure washing a roof again is costly, takes labor to do it. There's an alternative out there. Appeal is your option, is your um, solution for that. This is just a couple of pictures that you can see uh, on the bottom right hand corner there. They're, they're peeling back the appeal. They have a nice, beautiful white roof. The only downside here is the seam. You have to have that seam exposed and you can't have that film on it because you have, in this case, you have to do a hot air weld to complete that monolithic um, seam. But uh, so we thought we had a great mousetrap, but until you re you take all this peel off, now you have a zebra looking roof. And so that was a that was something that we didn't actually think about when we developed this product. And so we came up with this appeal cover tape where you just go back once your seams complete, put this down, and this now matches the rest of your uh, beautiful white roof. Cab grip. Talk about innovation uh, and labor savings. This is a hundred percent a product that speaks to that. This is a uh, an adhesive and a pressurized cylinder. Um, Carlisle was the first to the market with this a couple of years ago. A bunch of others raced to the market because they were losing work because of the, the, uh, the benefits that this particular product has. Again, it's a pressurized sprayable bonding adhesive um, and is a huge, huge game changer as it relates to speed of application. Uh, you can, again, do more with less. Um, it comes in a couple of different sizes, uh, an 85 pound cylinder and a 40 pound cylinder. Uh, again, a, a hose gets hooked up to that, and then a gun and a um, dispensing nozzle. Uh, the bigger tanks can be, be put on those carts. The top left-hand picture there is a splitter, so you can run multiple hoses and guns off of one tank. And so um, we have a, uh, this is probably, the, not probably, this is the most successful new product launch in Carlisle's history. And that's saying a lot about a company that emphasizes and prides itself on innovation. This, in time, uh, we believe will displace traditional bonding adhesive. Um, it has better installation temperatures. Um, it just uh, has a whole slew of, uh, of benefits that um, everybody in the marketplace is trying to is trying to leverage. Um, here's a couple of the cab grip advantages. Again, uh, it works with all the single plies except for, for PVC. We are uh, currently working on a pressurized adhesive for PVC. It's got low odor, so if you've got an occupied building, and you have all those exhaust fans on the top of the roof, if you're gonna go ahead and put bonding adhesive down, I promise you, you will get plenty of complaints from the inside of the building uh, and the occupants, the, the occupants within, that is not the case with cap grip. Um, and it's got very, very quick flash off time, even in really cold weather. So that, uh, again, is a significant advantage over traditional bonding adhesive. This just gives you kind of an idea what it looks like. Um, it comes out in this very, uh, what I like to call kind of like a cobweb type, um, um, visual, it tacks off extremely quick. So um, if I were to spray a 10 by 100 sheet, by the time I got to the end of it, it's ready to set that sheet. If you compare that to bonding adhesive, uh, you would be waiting easily um, 10, 15 minutes, if not longer, and most times longer in the winter. Um, one of the things that is a really unique system that you can be leveraged, especially when there's budget issues or constraints. I mean, everybody's got a budget, uh, whether you're in a pandemic or not, but um, it's even that attention to budget is, is, is obviously heightened or elevated during these times. And so there's some options out there for building owners to consider when in need of a roof that's beyond repair. Um, there are some very unique assemblies where you can go over top of the existing provided there's only one roof. And so this fleece back assembly, what you see here is an option to consider. So you have your existing roof making, first we would make sure that there's no existing moisture in the existing system. If there is, we would cut that out and replace it with new. Um, and we would do some minor prep work for that existing um, roof a waterproofing membrane or or um, maybe it's a built up um, roof etc so we do a little bit of prep work maybe put a separator board and then you put your fleece back on top of that roof and so it's just a really slick option to consider um, it's a big time focus of uh, Eric and his team in western Pennsylvania it's a system that gets leveraged very very um, heavily 
again, because it gives you the op opportunity to go over top of the existing. If you tear a roof off, it's very expensive. Um, and when you go back with a new, this is just a budget friendly option to consider again when you can't repair the existing roof. Just wanted to give you a kind of a, an illustration of a fully adhered roof. You got your roof deck, your insulation, your bonding adhesive, and then your membrane. In this case, it's an EPDM roof. And then another option is a mechanically fastened system. This, in this particular case, it's TPO. So you basically, again, do not use glue and you, all of your membrane attachment is just done at the seam and it keeps that roof uh, on. It doesn't uh, have any issues with uplift pressures and things like this. Um, and so uh, with that, I wanna turn it back over to Eric. Here's the con key contacts that Eric talked about. There's, we covered a lot. And I think we're doing pretty good on time too. We covered a lot. Um, but one, one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we uh, conveyed in this message is that Carlisle is here to help. We have a lot of resources deployed um, nationally as well as regionally, obviously, in, in Western Pennsylvania and in West Virginia. Um, and we want to be a resource for you uh, as it relates to any of your commercial roofing uh, needs and or um, questions, inquiries, whatever the case may be. So there is this is just scratching the surface on Carlisle, who we are and what we can provide. Uh, we are hopeful you found today's presentation to be informative and an effective use of your time, but uh, we would love to work with you on any project that you have upcoming and uh, again, just be a resource for you for your commercial roofing um, needs. And so I'll turn that over to Eric and see if he has yeah. anything else that he I mean, wants just to work with. Yeah, you, you, you covered it all, but uh, just to wrap up, um, Again, we, we try to be sensitive of the time, try to keep it to 45 minutes. I know we're a little over, so apologize for that. But as you can see, there's a lot of good information uh, to talk about. Um, innovation is the key for helping a contractor, uh, to, a roofing contractor to make money, uh, for an owner, uh, architect, uh, to keep their projects or you know re-roofs within budget. So uh, we appreciate you um, listening in today. Um, as, as far as one, you know, Jed commented on, I just want to mention again, um, budget is very important. And I've had a couple examples here recently, as Chad talked about, with architects coming to me with a building owner, uh, doesn't have a lot of money. They have one roof in place. Uh, and, and instead of a complete tear off, we looked at uh, a recover with the fleece back. And we've had great success stories to talk about there. So if you're on a budget, you know, again, we're talking about uh, products and systems and innovation can make a difference and it can help you. So uh, thanks again. Please reach out to us. Um, if you have just a quick question or if you had a specific project you needed assistance on, uh, we're here to help. Uh, I have a lot of experience to, you know, on in the commercial roofing business uh, to share with you. So thanks again, Greg. Thanks for sitting in today and, and talking about strategic account. And Chad, thanks for covering uh, the bulk of this presentation. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you very much.